Hi friends, um, welcome to the last um, big assignment of uh, this semester. Um, this is what we call in um, historical art and design the period project proposal. This is an individual project that you will work on by yourself and submit to me by December 6th. That's Sunday, December 6th. That's what's written on the syllabus. <laughs> I checked. <laughs> and that is uh, the d deadline. So you've got a month to do this project. Okay, so what is the period proposal project? This assignment calls on you to imagine yourself, imagine yourself to be an artist <laughs> or a craftsperson from one of the cultures we have studied this semester. So the period of prehistory to 1840. Hard deadline there, 19th century, 1840. Really would be very hard to um, pick a, um, even photography would be really difficult. So keep that in mind. Um, okay. Design a proposal for an original work of art to be created for a particular cultural context. So basically, you are going to think of an artwork that you would like to make if you were, for example, a Northern Renaissance painter, as we see this detail from uh, Robert Campin's Marode altarpiece. Uh, I'm sorry, my head is blocking a list, but but basically uh, this list is the list of periods that you can choose from. Prehistoric, ancient Egypt, ancient Greece, Etruscan and Roman, Byzantine, Buddhist, early medieval, Romanesque, Gothic, Islamic is not in here. The um, part of the class that covered Islamic art, that's included. Uh, 14th century in Italy, 15th century in Northern Europe, the Renaissance um, in the 15th century, in the 16th century, um, the 16th century um, in Northern Europe and the Iberian Peninsula, which um, we kind of start at the end of this week and we'll get to next week. Um, these are the periods that you can choose from. Um, you have to imagine uh, that you are designing an original work of art, so you're not copying something that's been made already, but something that would have been made according to what you know now about all of these periods. Is it a, um, a statue of an Egyptian pharaoh? Is it um, a, an illustrated manuscript? Um, is it um, a mosaic tile piece? Is it um, uh, an architecture counts? I know a lot of people asked in the um, first art and survival uh, paper if they could choose uh, a architecture to save. Yes, so you could also here create um, uh, a mosque, for example. Um, if that is something that you'd be interested in designing. Um, here is um, a fun part of it, is you must include a visual expression of your proposed design. Um, that means that you're gonna put pencil, uh, charcoal, watercolor, stylus to paper or tablet and uh, you are going to make some kind of physical rendering of the thing. Um, I don't expect a, you to deliver, I don't even know where you would deliver an object. Um, if you were making a sculpture, for example, um, I, you would take, you would make a rendering of what the sculpture would look like. You can draw it on a piece of paper, take a photograph of it with your smartphone, scan it, um, uh, any, you know, anything, um, but then include that within the document that you are going to submit to me. Um, and along with creating this rendering, I want you to describe it. So let's say that you are going to make a fresco uh, in a chapel and you are going to have a scene from uh, like this one of the lamentation. So Mary is 
mourning her dead son, you would describe the medium, you would describe the size, you would describe the subject matter, um, all of the things that we have been working on all semester in terms of making formal analysis of an object. Um, it also will help in this um, project that you sort of conceptualize the context in which you would be working. This is all hypothetical, this is all imaginary, but let's just say that you are an artist working in uh, 14th century Italy. Uh, maybe you would say, you know, I'm getting my money from a patron who is paying me to decorate his chapel. Um, and I am, you know, making this because he really wants to get in good with the spiritual powers that he believes in. Like that kind of context uh, would be very helpful to include. Um, so it's uh, an interesting project because it allows you to be creative and sort of play with your skills as uh, creative thinkers. Um, but it also requires you to kind of think about what we've learned in class, what we've read, and uh, mix your knowledge with your visual um, creation. All right, so here are a bulleted uh, list. Here is a bulleted list of things that your project proposal should cover. Uh, visual expression of your proposal. Also, I mean, I, I might be tending to discuss things like actual physical things that you make, but if you wanna do a rendering on a computer, that's absolutely fine. Um, I want, along with that image, I want a written description of your hypothetical piece. So I want you to write your own version of a, a formal analysis. Um, what it means, what materials, that kind of falls under the, the formal analysis. Um, who's going to fund this? How would you be getting money? Um, where would it be? And, you know, this is this is a suggestion, like how long do you think it would take to make the thing? And would you be making it by yourself? Would you have a whole studio of people helping you? Um, the deadline, Sunday, December 6th, um, you can submit your document to me on email or I'll have a place for it on Go Studio. I'm sorry, I, that is, um, Either one is fine. Uh, the text portion of the project should be approximately 750 words. Um, it's not a huge amount of writing, um, but it's going to be a visual rendering and 750 words. Okay, examples. You might choose to design a megalith sculpture. So your writing would be about how you would organize the labor force and how would you erect a structure. Um, and I've had students who have written and have been very clever about sort of putting themselves in the first person of this hypothetical artist who is uh, working in, a, you know, Neolithic period and um, is considering how they will make something. So um, you might want to kind of Put yourself in the position of the person you uh, are imagining yourself to be in. And you can write, in this case, in the first person and say, like, I want to build a solstice chart reader spiritual religious site out of massive stones. And this is how I'm going to do it. We didn't cover Stonehenge, but it's a period that is covered in this class. So you could look at that as an inspiration. You might want to choose the Roman period and focus on an emperor that interests you. Um, were you an artist uh, working within the um, hierarchy of a Roman emperor, what kind of work would you make to uh, solidify that person's power and position and authority? Would it be something like the Arapacus? Would it be a basilical structure? Would it be uh, a, an um, an arc like the arc of Titus. Um, so again, you know, the first person is always a, a pleasant way and a fun way to read it. Um, you might want to refer to contemporary works of your chosen period as illustrations of iconographic or stylistic elements. So for example, if you are going to create a statue of an Egyptian pharaoh, it would be helpful in your writing to say, looking at the past 
examples of other pharaohs who have created images of themselves. For example, Hatshepsut, you know, depicted herself in this way. And so, you know, kind of making reference to the other things that maybe have inspired you. Um, you do have to have three uh, sources uh, for your research. Um, I hope I have made it clear at this point um, with comments in your writing that they have to come from credible web sources. The, that is ones associated with academic or museum institutions. Um, I have everywhere in Ghost Studio the links to how that works. Um, and the library system at CCAD has a very clear libguide about how to begin web research. Um, I'm looking over at my phone because I feel like it's going to buzz with the result of the election. And um, so excuse my distractedness. <laughs> um, so uh, I would like um, you this um, explains this writing explains that you have to use footnotes uh, and a bibliography and three sources and uh, Instead of a journal assignment for this week, which is week, tw well, th this upcoming week, which will be week 12, uh, you won't have uh, an artwork to talk about, but you will have to give me your initial thoughts. What time period are you going to choose and what kind of thing would you like to make? You have to submit, you have to submit your ideas, even if they're the first whisper of an idea, a vaguest passing thought. You must put finger to type pad keys. You must respond. Um, you just have to. Okay. All right. Well, I, I hope that this is clear. I will make a version of this that is not a video, a, a page of this, these same instructions that will be on uh, the uh, Go Studio page for you to peruse. Um, and uh, if you have any questions, please be in touch. I'm happy to uh, help. And remember that this is due a month from now on Sunday, December 6th. And this is an individual project. It's just you. Okay. Cheers. Thanks, guys.